Terrahawks, stay on this channel. This is my final broadcast. Dr. Tiger Neinstein is the commander of the Terrorhawks and one of nine clones, which means that his duties as leader of the team can continue even if he is killed in the line of duty. I was bred for this role, to defend the Earth. It hasn't been easy, but do you know how many lives I've saved? At the end of Series 2, Dr. Neinstein sacrificed his life to destroy an alien battle fleet. Or so you think. Yet as Series 3 opens, all may not be quite as it seemed. What in space fire is going on? I is not entirely sure, sir. As one crisis fades, another disaster looms when Zelda launches a final devastating assault on Hawkness. This ship is on a collision course with Earth. I'm going to do my best to steer it out of harm's way. Will Neinstein be able to stop her? Or is this tiger about to lose another of his nine lives? It was a pleasure serving with you. Terrorhawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Captain Mary Falconer is second in command of the Terrorhawks. Loyal and brave, Mary is also madly in love with Dr. Tiger Neinstein. I hope we're still on for that dinner. Mary, it's a date. After the shocking conclusion of Series 2, Mary was left in command of what little remained of the Terrorhawks organization. Kate! Is anyone out there? But when it transpires that her friends might not be dead, she launches a dangerous rescue mission into the heart of Zelda's complex to retrieve them. Mary, are you certain this is the best course of action? It's the only cause. Even so, at least one of the Terrorhawks will still end up paying the ultimate price during Series 3. Youngster, grab Falconer! And things between Mary and Tiger will never be the same again. I can't lose you again! Terrorhawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Captain Kate Kestrel is third in command of the Terrorhawks and pilot of their fighter craft Hawkwing alongside her partner, Lieutenant Hawkeye. Let's give him space fire. Kate also leads a double life as a world famous pop star, which sometimes leads to complications due to her role in the Terrorhawks. Well, it's harmless enough. At the end of Series 2, Kate led the battle against Prince Zegar's alien war fleet. They're armed to the teeth and aggressive as hell, Mary. Give them all you've got, Kate. Tan Tan. And was killed when his flagship exploded. But as Series 3 opens, Kate finds herself a prisoner on Mars in the evil clutches of Zelda. We thought you were killed. Well, so did we, sort of. But it seems Zelda's been up to some dirty tricks. Will Kate and her friends escape? Or has this hawk sung her very last song? This has got to be one of Zelda's most dastardly schemes to date. Hawk, stay on this channel. This here's an emergency. Lieutenant Hawkeye is Kate Kestrel's co-pilot and gunner aboard Hawkwing. The pair share a strong bond of friendship, as shown at the end of Series 2 when he sacrificed his life to save hers during the final battle. I've got your back, Katie. Always. Hawkeye, what are you... No, Hawkeye! At the start of Series 3, we learn that Hawkeye may have had a miraculous escape, although if Zelda has anything to say about it, his survival might be short-lived. All cubes, open fire! As the great escape begins, Kate and Hawkeye are finally reunited and prove once again that their partnership is one of the greatest assets that the Terrorhawks have at their disposal. Good to see the old gal again, ain't it, Katie? Not quite as good as it is to see you again, partner, but it's pretty close. Terrorhawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Lieutenant Hero is the technical genius of the Terrorhawks organization. Dun dun! A keen horticulturist and commander of their orbiting space station, Spacehawk. At the end of Series 2, Hero was one of a handful of survivors of the battle against Prince Zegar's invasion fleet. But we must remember that while duty is heavy as a mountain, death is lighter than a feather. Our heroes can rest easy now. But as he investigates the aftermath of the conflict, he makes a startling discovery that could uncover a gigantic conspiracy. What could it be? 
along with Mary and his trusty Xeroid sidekick Space Sergeant 101, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, Hero launches a counter-offensive against Zelda, but it will take all of his scientific expertise and technical skill if they're going to recover their missing friends. Go, Mary! No! on this channel. This is an emergency! <laughs> Zelda is the tyrannical ruler of the alien and android forces waging war against Earth from their base on Mars. At the end of Series 2, Zelda forged an alliance with the Terrorhawks to defeat a more powerful enemy, the dreaded Prince Zegar of Guk, and was killed in the resulting conflict. Let's just say that I took some advice from a very good doctor. <laughs> but as the story resumes in Series 3, we learn that this may all turn out to be one of her most elaborate schemes to date. The best is yet to come, little one. Follow me. <laughs> this is marvelous. <laughs> Just marvelous. Has Zelda finally defeated the Terrorhawks? Or is even she starting to tire of the seemingly endless conflict between the Earth and Mars? What are we fighting for? Sistar is Zelda's fashion-obsessed sister and the devoted mother of the hermaphrodite schizophrenic genius Itzdar. Oh, what a clever little baby I have! And is also locked in a constant battle with the long blonde wig on top of her head. Hold it still or I shall have to rivet it to your head! Sistar was killed at the end of Series 2, but as Series 3 begins we soon learn that this may have been nothing more than a devious ruse on the part of her beloved family to get her out of the way. Now, Sistar finds herself moving in royal circles as Zelda makes a grab for power on Earth. Come, my future prince and princess. Wonderful! But is the world really ready for Princess Sistar? Continue to go about your routine in blissful ignorance. Thank you! Terror Hawks! Stay on this channel! This is an emergency! Is that okay, mother? Youngstar is Zelda's devoted yet exceptionally stupid son, who also has an insatiable appetite for granite crunchies. At the end of Series 2, Youngstar was murdered in cold blood by Prince Zegar. <laughs> But it's soon revealed that this was just part of Zelda's latest devious plan. Hello, As Series 3 unfolds, Youngstar finds himself on the receiving end of some good luck for a change, as he acquires his very own vehicle and also gets to become part of his favourite television show. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to sing! Has Youngstar finally found his calling, and if so, how long will he be allowed to enjoy it? I sound quite good, don't I? Mm, you sound like you are in pain, my uncle. Terrorhawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Sergeant Major Zero is the fearless leader of the Terrorhawks army of spherical robotic soldiers, the Zeroids. Although fiercely brave and loyal to his colleagues, despite enjoying a friendly rivalry with Dr. Einstein and Space Sergeant 101, Zero would be the first to admit he isn't the most intelligent of the Zeroids. Geronimo! It's very discreet. And it often falls to his subordinates Dees Wheaton 35 to keep him out of trouble. I don't like this at all, 35. Time for a wrecking! At the start of Series 3, as yet another fiendish plot to entrap the Terrorhawks is unveiled, it naturally falls to the Sergeant Major to stroll on and save the day once again. If it isn't my least favourite clone. <coughs> yes, yes, and that spherical simpleton. Much better. Terrorhawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency! 
Space Sergeant 101 is the commander of the Xeroids stationed aboard Spacewalk. Highly strung and highly emotional, Spacefire with damnation! 101 also enjoys a very close working relationship with Lieutenant Hero. But it just feels like you'd rather talk to your plants than to me. 101, I hold your friendship in the highest regard. At the end of Series 2, a devastated 101 found himself the only surviving Xeroid. They're gone! <laughs> but by the start of Series 3, has become rather comfortable with the idea. Don't sound so disappointed. Yet as Zelda's latest diabolical plan unfolds, 101 will do all he can to help save the captured Terrorhawks who are being held prisoner on Mars. Even if that does include his old rival, Sergeant Major Zero. Terra Ox, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Dizweet is Sergeant Major Zero's stalwart second in command, a mustachioed French Zeroid with a world weary attitude. The Sergeant Major, he calls me Dix Hewitt. And a unique insight into the language of love. I am a Frenchman. We created the language of love, the pleasure of passion. At the end of Series 2, Dizweet was killed, leading the combined Zeroid and Cube squadron into battle against Prince Zegar's invasion fleet. Three, two, one, fire! But a chance turn of events means the long-suffering Dizweet is soon back in action alongside the Sergeant Major. Throughout Series 3, Dizweet is kept busy on various missions, counsels Mary on her relationship with Tiger, and even finds time to visit London, where he meets a very important lady. There must be the laws about the breaking into a palace. Terrorhawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. 35 is the latest addition to the Xeroid contingent. Over-enthusiastic and keen to prove herself, I want to show you that I can be just as useful as any other Xeroid. While also nursing a crush on Sergeant Major Zero, uh, Just you stick close by me, girl. Oh, always. 35 was killed at the end of Series 2. But as Series 3 opens, 35 finds herself a prisoner in the Martian complex. Back off, Zelda! Oh, what exactly? The race is on to escape from the Evil Queen's clutches, and along the way, 35 will once again prove her worth to the Terrorhawks. Nice, nice work, 35. 35! Thank you, Commander, Sergeant Major. As well as make a new friend in one of their oldest enemies. Oh, hello! What's that on your name tag? Oh, you're... you. Terra Hawks, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Hudson is Dr. Einstein's prized Rolls Royce and is the Terra Hawks' primary method of inconspicuous travel. I do love a Rolls Royce. Hudson is pretty smart. Uh, why, thank you, sir. This hyper intelligent smart car is equipped with an artificial intelligence system and the ability to blend into its surroundings. At the end of Series 2, Hudson was converted into a space fighter in order to take on Prince Zegar. The conversion from smart car to smart space fighter was marvellous. I've never felt better. You've never looked better. And was one of the many casualties of the subsequent battle. But following a lengthy rebuild, Hudson is once again back out on the road and ready to serve the needs of the Terrorhawks in the same way he always has. With style and sophistication and class. You okay to drive yourself, Hudson? Absolutely, man. Rather looking forward to the off.